Hello, and welcome to another episode of Car Brief. I'm your host, Richard L. Slater, a licensed attorney in the state of Illinois. And I have a gang dredged up, a scary tale from the legal graveyard of automotive horror to bring you this sordid little tale. This is a story of a $4 million BMW paint job. Yes, you heard me correctly, a $4 million BMW paint job in a case entitled BMW of North America versus Gore. Let's rip into this, shall we? This is a case that came out of Alabama. This was decided back in 1995. It's an old case, but it's still good law as far as I know. Primary issues in this case involved appeals whether a German automobile manufacturer had sufficient contacts with the state of Alabama to permit the courts of that state to exercise personal jurisdiction. And two, whether a jury's award of $4 million in punitive damages against the manufacturer and its distributor was excessive. Well, what do you think? $4 million for a BMW paint job? I like BMWs, but not $4 million paint job worth in any event. This went up on appeal. This case arises out of a plaintiff, a doctor, a specifically Dr. Ira Gore. He bought a new 1990 BMW 535i from German Auto Inc. It was a Birmingham dealership for $40,750.88. He had no direct dealings either with BMW AG, that's German for Octin Gesellschaft, that's the parent corporation that's over in Germany, or BMW NA, which is BMW North America. At the time of the sale, Dr. Gore was a graduate from Harvard College and Duke Medical School, and he signed a retail buyer's order and an acknowledgement of disclosure in which he acknowledged that the automobile might have sustained damage at some point and that he had inspected it and had agreed to accept it. This disclosure form did not list the repair that is the subject of this action. Gore drove the car for approximately nine months before taking it to, quote, slick finish, unquote, gotta like that name, an independent automobile, automobile detailing shop to make the car look snazzier than it normally would appear, even though he was not unsatisfied with the car's appearance and had not noticed any flaws in the finish on the car. The detailer is the one that ratted out BMW. He noted that the car had been partially refinished and he let Gore know that fact. Gore later determined that the refinishing had been done because of acid rain damage to the car's paint finish sustained during transit between BMW's AG manufacturing plant in Germany and BMW's North America Vehicles Preparation Center in Brunswick, Georgia. So BMW NA, the American distributor of BMW automobiles had adopted a company policy that it would not disclose any damage to a dealer or to a customer if the cost of repairing the damage was less than 3% of the manufacturer's suggested retail price. The cost of refinishing Gore's automobile was $601, less than 3% of the manufacturer's suggested retail price, the MSRP. Consequently, BMW of North America did not disclose that the automobile had been refinished. The jury found that the damage brought uh, the car's value down by $4,000, or about 10% of the price paid by Gore. Well, Gore was furious about this when he found out. Upon discovery of this, this omission, uh, he, he immediately sued German Auto, BMW AG, which is the parent company, as I mentioned, and BMW of North America, alleging that the failure to disclose the refinishing constituted a fraud, a suppression of a material fact, and breach of contract. With respect to the BMW defendants, only the suppression claim was submitted to the jury. So only the jury heard uh, the suppression of a material fact. That was the only thing that was brought before them. I suppose the other things must have been uh, canceled out or, or suppressed or dismissed for whatever reason. Well, anyway, that seemed to be enough because the jury returned a verdict against all three defendants for $4,000. Sounds fair to me in compensatory damages but they really screwed BMW with the $4 million in punitive damages against the defendants jointly based on determination that BMW defendants have been guilty of gross, malicious, malicious, intentional, and wanton fraud. The trial court entered a judgment on that verdict and subsequently denied any post-judgment motions 
filed by the BMW defendants, and now that's the subject of this appeal, not surprisingly. Well, BMW AG, the parent company out of Germany, uh, indicated that they were a foreign corporation and they should be absolved or released from this action because they were subject to the personal jurisdiction of the Alabama courts. They lack sufficient contacts to allow the courts to exercise job personal jurisdiction over it. And uh, they indicated that Gore's automobile had become the property of BMW North America long before any refinishing of other repairs were performed. So they're trying to absolve themselves. If they say, hey, we're a German company, let BMW North America take the hit on this because we're not subject to the Alabama court jurisdiction. Well, the appellate court, or actually the Supreme Court of Alabama agreed and uh, reversed the decision against BMW AG and they were let out of the case. Who wasn't let out of the case was the uh, BMW North America and they court went on to essentially state that, yes, we're going to hold that what you did was a uh, material misrepresentation and uh, that uh, you knowingly and intentionally suppressed any fact upon which Gore's claim was based. Uh, we need not address whether BMW AG, if the facts were different, could be subject to suit in Alabama. They're out of the case. Now they consider the BMW North America arguments who argued that there's no evidence, much less clear and convincing that BMW North America consciously or deliberately engaged in oppression, fraud, wantonness, or mal malice with regard to the plaintiff as required by the Alabama code 1975 section 6-11-20 to assess punitive damages. They're saying, look, we, we shouldn't be paying $4 million for this, it's a paint job. We, we didn't do anything that was really wrong or was nothing horrendous. We had an internal policy and uh, we abided by it. He wasn't harmed by it. The only uh, damage he may have suffered was economic and certainly not to the tune of $4 million. Well, the court went on with their analysis uh, and indicated that, uh, well, there was, there was uh, misrepresentation here, misrepresentation sufficient to allow a punitive damage verdict. The evidence showed that BMW adopted the policy of non-disclosure in 1983 and that the policy applied to the sale of all automobiles in all states. Based on this evidence, we conclude that Gore satisfactorily proved that BMW North America engaged in a pattern and practice of knowingly failing to disclose damage to their new cars, even though the damage affected their value, and that BMW North America followed this policy for several years. So this was ongoing for a while. This wasn't something new or some aberration or it was just one car. So based on the evidence, we conclude that Gore satisfied the burden placed on him to show that BMW North America's conduct was reprehensible, essentially disgusting. It's clear from the evidence that the $4 million judgment would not have a substantial impact upon BMW North America's financial position or operation. So they said, well, $4 million, that's really not gonna kill your operation. We're not really going to uh, disturb that uh, that decision because you're going to still business is going to go on life is going to go on for you uh, they looked at the jury's reasoning and they figured that the jury based their damage estimate their punitive damage on a multiplication of four thousand the diminution of the value of gore's vehicle times a thousand so they multiplied the four thousand dollars in lost value of the vehicle and they multiplied it by a thousand to come up with the four million dollar verdict well, the court went on to indicate that though uh, after thoroughly and painstakingly looking at the jury's award in light of the factors discussed, they held that it was constitutionally reasonable for these punitive damages award to be $2 million. So they actually did what was called a remitter. The damages were remitted or lessened because $4 million seemed to be a little excessive. The court chopped it in half to $2 million dollars. And uh, they said that that would be uh, appropriate on a $4 million jury verdict. So they said that the trial court's order that denied BMW's motion for a new trial, because they made a motion for a new trial on it, uh, is affirmed on the condition that the plaintiff file with the court in 21 days, the remitter of damages to the sum of $2 million. So actually $4 million became $2 million. But if the plaintiff's attorney wasn't going to agree to that, then, well, we're just gonna uh, grant the uh, request for a new trial and let a new jury decide. 
I think that the plaintiff's attorney would have been wise to go ahead and agree to that remitted her, and I believe they did. Uh, that was the end of the case. Well, what can we take from this? Do your due diligence when you buy a new car. Have it inspected. Look at it very closely. There may be hidden defects on it that you don't know about. And when you bring it home, it may have a lot of problems and headaches with it. How are you going to find out? Well, you kind of have to do your own due diligence, test drive it, look at it closely, check out the paint. You may want to bring somebody along that's uh, knowledgeable about such things and they can make an evaluation. I know they're new cars and it's probably presumed that a new car is not going to have these defects. Well, this case clearly indicates that new cars do have defects and they also have some hidden damages that may be uh, masked by the seller, uh, the, the new car dealer. So takeaway is do your due diligence, look for damages, look for hidden issues. And uh, essentially it's sort of a caveat enter. Wasn't caveat enter in this case though, because BMW got the short end of the stick and they paid out a substantial verdict in this case. Well, that concludes this analysis. And now the air is cleared, the rain has stopped, and the clouds are gone. The case is over, and the sun shines once more, until next time when legal storm clouds form in yet another case of automotive terror from the courts. I'm Richard Elslager, your host of Car Brief, and I bid you happy motoring and drive defensively. Until then, I wish you a good evening. Take care.